Okay, we're back with... I don't know if this is Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop or not. I guess it could be. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Anyway, before we start, I'd just like to say thank you to everybody who helped out with the wireless internet thing. Still having a little bit of trouble with a few things, but it's working a lot better than it did. Anyway, some of you might recognize this mess. My Franken PC that I made some time ago. Anyway, I decided to get this online so I could share files from this computer as well. So what I did was I got this little Belkin USB thing that I've had lying around for quite some time. It worked, but it's incredibly slow. Probably because it's a Belkin. So, instead of this, going to use this. A wireless access point. Hopefully you can see a little better now. Now I've connected a um, wired port to the Ethernet port on this computer. And I'm going to connect that to one of the Ethernet ports on this. Now I've already set this up to um, I've already set this thing up to be a wireless access point. This is a 150 megabit access point, so we should get much faster internet access on this thing now. One little problem though, I have absolutely nowhere to plug this in. I've got the adapter right here, and nowhere to plug it in. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run this off the computer's power supply. I know some of you are thinking that I'm absolutely crazy doing this, and perhaps I am, but I don't think it's going to come to any harm. I just need to find a spare thingy that I can actually plug this into. Let's see if we can... Ah, yeah. Now, I've got to remember here, the black wires are ground, the red wire is 5 volts, and the yellow, the yellow wire is 12. And this thing takes 5 volts with a positive tip. So I'm just going to cut this wire off, connect it to here, make sure I've got the polarity the right way around so I don't fry anything, and that should be all well and good. Okay, so now you can see I've cut that connector off, and just going, before I connect it up to anything, just going to check its polarity to make sure that we don't connect it in the wrong way around because if we do, or rather if I do, I don't know who this we is, but if I do connect it in the wrong way around, well, I'm sure to blow up something. Now usually on these things, the striped wire is connected to the center terminal and the striped wire is usually the positive, but that's not always the case on these things. So what I want to do is make sure I know which wire goes to which thing on this I want to know which wire goes to the inside and which wire goes to the outside. So what I've done here is just connect, got a battery and a fan. I've connected one end of the fan to the striped wire. So if the striped wire goes into the center connection, the fan will start. So let's see if what we get And it is not turning at all. Might not be connecting, but just to make sure, I'm going to connect this to the outside connector and let's see if the fan spins. Ah, there we go. So now we know the striped wire goes to the outside bit of the connector. All right, so we've got everything wired up now. That was a good thing I did check the polarity of those wires. Because like you saw, it turns out that the striped wire is the negative and the wire without the stripes is the positive. And if I hadn't have checked that, I would have connected that with the striped wire going to the positive And if I'd have turned that on like that, I would have blown it up. So uh, it's now in here, ready to go on connected to the computer's 5 volt rail. So we'll turn this on and let's see if we get any. Well, I can see a couple of lights have come on on the thing, so that's good. Computer is booting up. 
nothing has exploded, which is quite good really, considering how some things have gone previously, which have always been while I haven't been shooting or off camera. The only thing I don't know is I don't know if this has my old wireless password or my new wireless password in it. So we'll just have to see what happens when I try to get online. And I really need to give this screen a clean. I've been marking the bits off the screen where I've been doing various different things. And I think you Yanks call those magic markers. Well, I think over here we just call them permanent markers. But either way, yeah, I'm going to have to wipe that off the screen. Though it's just one big glare on the camera. Well, anyway, let's uh, have a look and see. It doesn't, doesn't seem to have... I don't see any icons saying that it has internet access. So I'm just going to let this sit for a minute while it gets... While it does whatever it does. Okay, well, let's see if we have any internet access. Let's try to go to Internet Explorer. I don't know if it's actually trying to load something or if it's just sitting there not doing anything. Let's do... Let's put in Gmail into the search and see what happens. Well, the hard drive's going like mad, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. I don't know if it's loading something or if it's uh, thinking about it. Oh, hang on. We have limited or no connectivity. That is not good. Okay, well, it took a lot of grunting and almost resorting to swearing at this thing to get this thing to actually work but in fact I was almost at the point where I wanted to take a sledgehammer to this thing trying to configure it so it would talk to my super hub but in the end I found the software disk and set it up with that and it made everything a whole lot easier and now I am happy to say that this thing does now have an internet connection and I have also gone ahead and installed Google Chrome on this thing because when I went to check my Gmail, I got a nasty little message saying that Gmail is no longer supported in Microsoft Internet Explorer and would I like to install Google Chrome? So that's what I have done. So now we can go into Google Chrome. And it's already loading my mail, as you can see. There we go, got all my mail, and yes, this guy has been spamming me again. So do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to select all of these messages, and do you know what I'm going to do with these messages? Well, I have found a very useful thing right here. So that's what I'm going to do with your messages. Yes, you were just wasting your time posting all these because I haven't opened any of them and they're going right where they belong. So, meh. Yeah. Anyway, let's have a look and see what kind of internet speed we have on this. I don't expect it to be anywhere near as good as my main computer. Oh, I've got to put in my, uh, my postcode. All right. So let's see what kind of results we get here. We've got a download speed of about 28 megabits a second. See what the upload speed is. We're at... Okay, about 1.8 megabits a second. Not bad. And look at that. My internet speed is only second best to... Uh, Whoever this guy is. And when I did this test on my other computer, my speed was the fastest. Alright, well, starting to get things together now. I've put it back together. Anyway, let's just finish off by playing a game that is not on this computer, but is on one of my other computers. I've managed to make the folder publicly accessible. So, let's play a little bit of the Incredible Machine Contraptions. Phew! Sierra! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, it's loading a little bit slowly. Welcome to the return of the incredible machine. Uh, oh, uh, ignore that. I'm just going to play as a guest. Hi, I'm the professor. If you're playing this, this is probably your first contraption. I know how to play this game. I have played it many, many times before. Well, I'm going to leave now and get on with this. I'm so awesome. Okay, now just before I go, there is a little something I want to talk about, and I don't know why it's doing it, but anyway, we're looking at the public documents folder, and the my documents folder on my main computer, which is uh, this one over here by the window. So as you can see, I have the public documents folder open on the left, and the my documents folder open on the right. And because this is all network now, I'm going to open that folder on this computer as well, over the network. So I'll go to my network places, users on Clem's PC, public documents. So now I've got that public documents folder open on both the computers. Just make this a bit smaller so I can put stuff into it. Now I'm going to take some files. Got a few various things right here, many programs and stuff. And I'm going to put those into the documents folder. So I'm just going to select all of these, bring these over into the documents folder. So it's now copying those. And if we go to the other computer while it's doing this, you can see they're now coming over into the folder here. The weird thing is, it's also coming through into my documents. You can see we're here, we have a folder called Core Temp32, and it's also placed it in the My Documents folder. Now I don't want it to affect the My Documents folder. There's also electronic stuff. That wasn't in my documents before. But for some reason, whenever it puts something in here, it also puts it in here, and I don't know why. If I was to delete any of these files that are in here, it will also delete the ones that it put in my documents. And I didn't know it was going to do this. I had a lot of files in this public documents folder, which I also saw in my documents, so I thought, oh well, well, I don't need these in the public documents folder. I might just as well clear that out. And lo and behold, deleting the files in here deleted the files that are put in my documents as well. And I had absolutely no backups of those files. No backups whatsoever. So, it doesn't put it in the recycle bin or anything like that. I did manage to find a file recoverer program and... Um, get most of those files back that I thought I'd lost forever, but it's still really not the point. So I'm just going to wait for all these files to come over, and then I'll delete some and show you what actually happens. So anyway, there's all the files now copied. Now if I go into my documents and delete these files, if I delete these files in the My Documents folder, you'll notice that it also deletes the corresponding files in the public documents folder. I obviously didn't select all of the files there that it copied over, but you can see where I'm going with this. Okay, now I'll just undo the delete in the file because I can do this in my documents. So now I'm deleting, putting all those files back. Now here's the thing. If I delete these folders in the public documents folder, it will permanently delete anything that's in the My Documents folder, and there is absolutely no way to go back if I do it from the other computer, which is what I'm actually going to do. So I'm going to go over to the other computer. Sorry for the weird camera angle here, but I'm just going to select all these files and delete them.
Yes, delete all 78 gigabytes. I mean all 78 files. And you'll see they should start disappearing from here. And I've got a wire caught on my tripod here. But while these files are being deleted, you'll see they're also disappearing from my documents as well. Or at least it would if the computer would stop asking me questions and just get on with it. But as you can see, the files are gone from my documents. Well, most of them are anyway. I don't know why some of them are still there, but... Okay, it did delete all the files. It just wasn't updating. So all the files are now gone from both public documents and my documents. Apart from that, everything else is working absolutely perfectly. I have even gotten my entire laptop C drive to be accessible over the network. I've called the drive Laptop C, and as a matter of fact, as soon as I turn my laptop on, Laptop C has automatically appeared in the My Network places. But for some reason, I cannot access it on Windows XP, which is really weird. Yet, if I go over to one of the Windows 7 computers, I'll go to Call Dude Clem Lap, and go to Laptop C here, I can access all the folders, including a DVD rip I did of Red Dwarf, which I won't actually play for copyright reasons, but there you go. So I can play any of the files from this. Let's just try to find something that isn't copyrighted, just to prove it. What have we got in games? See if we can play a game from the laptop's hard drive. Revolt, let's see if that works. I think I have already put the registry entries for Revolt into this, but um, let's just try and bring that up, see if it works. Yes, I want to run it. Yeah, and there it goes. So anyway, that's about it for this video, because I'm sure I've rambled on for way too long now. Anyway, I'm going to sit back and play this now totally free, awesome racing game. So until next time, goodbye.